and this is New Day. You're welcome to Big Issues. And of course, uh, this, we're going to talk about issues that have been on the lips of many Ghanaians. And the illegal mining issue, or Galamse, as it is popularly called, has been on the lips of many Ghanaians, like I just said. And this time around, it seems that people are resolute. They want the issue dealt with, not tomorrow, not next year, not in the next five years, but they want action now. And if you've been following us, we've been delving into all the calls that are coming through uh, for the small-scale mining activity activities to be to be banned in the country. We've also heard the land ministry's response to this call, even also as uh, a call also from the uh, Small Scale Miners Association. And all of that that they are saying about, you just uh, watched Cookie introduce our guest here, and we have uh, George Money, NPP Assistant Regional Secretary, Western Region. Good morning to you, sir. Thank you for joining us. Yeah, good morning, and thanks for having me. We also do have Ibrahim Amaliba, Director uh, of Conflict Resolution for the Opposition, NDC. Thank you so much for good joining morning, us good on morning. today. Uh, there's something which is dear to my heart and I want to spew it out. At the bar conference, I was appalled at the corruption that engulfed the election of a bar president. I'm a lawyer and I think that my association did not cover itself in glory. The government apparently had a preferred candidate and pumped in money. Then that candidate used that money to literally get his way through to be made the president. Mrs. Gatti? She's the one know, who won, and she's the first well, female well, so, uh, president of so, the Bar Association. Yes, I mean, so, that's not part of so, the issues we're talking about. Yes, but about, there's but something I'm, which is dear to my heart. I am appalled at the way the lawyers allow themselves to be corrupted so as to get that outcome. I am disappointed. These are the same people who become judges. And when we sit on radio and say that we know judges who take bribes, it's because of some of these things. Mr. Maliba, I haven't introduced the last guest yet. Yes. Let me just do so, and then I'll come back to what you're saying, because I'm just wondering what evidence you even have, really, to uh, make these claims that uh, there was corruption at this election. But we also do have with us Andrew Apia Dankwa, private legal practitioner, communications team member, Movement for Change. That's Mr. Alain Tremontine. Thank you, sir. Good morning, and thank you for joining us on Big Issues. Yeah, morning, morning Belinda. Victory, <laughs> yes, indeed. Yeah, thank victory. you. Yeah, I hope, I hope, well, I hope, I hope joined, you are, you are Actually, he's it. already joined us, Professor uh, Paul uh, Poku uh, Sampene, or say he is pathologist, scientist, senior lecturer, KNUST. He'll be delving into the health issues of illegal mining, why we sat down for this to happen. Uh, ordinary Ghanaians aiding foreigners into our forest water bodies, and perhaps while the, why the government has also failed to deal with this very issue while we are here. Abraham so Amali, but conclude. what evidence do let you have conclude. that there was corruption at this uh, election? People were called, lawyers were called, for them to agree to have their conference fees paid for, to have their accommodation paid for, to have their shuttle within Kumasi paid for, so they vote for a particular candidate. Calls were received, and people are there to testify. I am not saying that what the government did alone is bad. I am saying that lawyers, my colleagues, who are supposed to know better should have refrained from engaging in those practices because mm. this our profession is a noble one and if you have lawyers engaging in that i would disassociate myself from that. Mr. Maliba, we'll move on from there. But again, I'll repeat that you're making these claims. You're saying that people have been called. But you haven't yes. given us any evidence yes. to support the, 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 this the, claim the you're making. The calls were so made to human beings. And they are, they are ready, they are ready to line up and give evidence. So when they are ready to do that, but for now, we don't have any evidence from you. So we disassociate ourselves from this claim. Uh, people are praising the fact that for the first time, a woman has been elected to be president of the GBA. So when you have evidence, we can have that. 
that conversation. But I told you that for the past two weeks or more, the nation has been talking about illegal mining because they have seen and realized the devastation it has caused our water bodies. Babies are being uh, born with deformities, uh, some not having organs in mining communities. In fact, we do understand that Eight out of ten uh, kidney-related uh, diseases come from mining communities. And you will understand that we are struggling in our cocoa sector right now because over 16,000 hectares of our cocoa uh, farmlands have been destroyed by illegal mining. Not to talk about the fact that recently the Ghana Water Company Limited also said that it could not treat about 50% of our waters. And if you've had the opportunity to watch some of the videos we've been, we've been showing you, it's quite sad, the color of the water uh, bodies and, and the fact that by 2030, that's the prediction by the Ghana Water Company Limited, we will not have water to drink as a country. And that's why we are still staying on this issue. And we'll shortly be crossing over to Professor Ose, who is standing by to give us a breakdown because he's done some work into this area and really the impact of it on our health and eventually our economy and every aspect of it. But let me also tell you, that there have been a lot of calls. The calls have intensified. Yesterday, uh, religious leaders led by the Archbishop of the Christian Action Faith Ministry, Nicholas Duncan Williams, signed a statement calling for a ban on small-scale mining. We've had organized labor giving the government or, or threatening to hit the streets if nothing is done about it now. We also have uh, another deadline, as it were, from UTAC saying that if by 30th of this month the government has not been able to deal with illegal mining, the, 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 there will be serious action from that front as well. So let's get this going. Let's establish really the health impact as we have it now. We're joined via video call by Professor Paul Pokusampene Oseprof. I know that you've done extensive work into this. Just give us a breakdown really over the years how the 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 uh, uh, the inability i should put it of ghanaians and leadership to deal with this very issue has affected us particularly on our health prof if you can hear me i'm asking you to give us a breakdown of the impact of illegal mining or as we call it galamse on our health and i'm sure there will be some rippling effects in other areas of our lives as well as a country okay thank you so much um um madam host and uh, let me start by appreciating you for the opportunity given uh and that uh, i'm also extending same greetings to the the panelists on board your the program today um i must also say very big thank you to utac uh grand america association and all other bodies that have joined hands in this uh, fight against this galaxy or the so-called mining either small scale large scale or whichever way we may call it that seeks to um, pollute our air water bodies and even our soil if had it not been you some of these things that we are doing wouldn't have come to light uh, we will be in our labs in our various universities uh, doing our, our thing and as usual Nobody will be interested in reading even the, the, the research works that we do, the, research, the results. So I'm most grateful for the opportunity. But let me also add that um, our generation seems to be, I mean, despising everything our elderly or our elders valued. And so therefore, we, we seek to mock and then uh, scorn everything that they have done and that is that is very sad i'm saying this on the background that if you look at the the reactions that the various in fact this government has taken when this matter came up for the government to take a stance as to declare the state of emergency and if you look at what we are seeing and what we are hearing is so disheartening especially when they have whatever it takes to make sure that things are done the right way. 
in terms of we are not saying that the ban should be I mean perpetual, but or rather the ban should be I mean in place so as to have some form of a change of direction and so and so forth. Because if you look at it and you you take some people who are rather the very people who have encouraged uh, continue to encourage these managers to do whatever they are doing and then you tell me that they are the very ones who are going to enforce the law this time then it's, it's something that personally and i believe that a lot of Ghanaians do understand okay let's get back to whatever it is that uh, i'm here this morning um if you look at the the health impact of galamsey um i believe that uh is something that is uh very clear to everybody to see. I started this um, work somewhere 2000, 2000 and uh, yeah, sorry, two, 2020 rather, 2020, and then came to a conclusion that yes, there is a link between those who live in Galamsey sites or mining sites and then the bad effect that they actually uh, I mean, see in their communities. And then uh, the conclusion was that um, something must be done to avert it. Then later on, we got to understand also that some people are also having all manner of disease, including skin, kidney, liver, brain, and the, and the GIT um, pathologies. And so therefore, we realize that we are heading towards a very serious place and therefore we need to do something about it. And that is exactly what I've done so far. And I'm still doing it. As recent as two months ago, I picked some water bodies from these areas where mining is being done. And then we realized that up to 3.5 kilometers away from this Galamsey site or where mining has been done and abandoned, I'm, I'm talking about the site being abandoned or even actively mining, 3.5 kilometers away from this site, you could see appreciable values of mercury, lead, cyanide, and so and other heavy metals within their water bodies. Even though the quantities vary as you as you move away from the the Galamsey, uh, the Galamsey site, but of course it's appreciable enough to cause I mean, all manner of health issues because some of these ions or some of these metals are biodegradable, and so therefore it can any time cause problem when it is accumulated in the in the quantity that can actually cause DNA and DNA mutations and chromosomal abrasions or chromosomal changes, and that can cause all manner of problems for us if we are, if nothing is done about it. If nothing is done about it, you say, Prof, but of course we have the statistics that kidney diseases are on the rise, even among infants or children. Now, you're telling us about other diseases as well, including skin. Are you able to tell us, based on what you've done, how worse this is getting beyond the statistics we know of kidney diseases? Well, uh, it's, I can always, I uh, mean, uh, tell the story of what is happening uh, based on this research that I'm, uh, I'm doing and I continue doing, and even those that I've done, I said that just about two months ago, a bar team of researchers uh, picked, apart from the water bodies, we are still continuing doing work. I mean, on mothers who, for some reason, went into labor and could not make it, when we, we take their, their, their placenta, together with the babies, when the babies have also lost their life as a result of all this protracted labor, you realize that the, the placenta still contains high level of uh, mercury, high level of lead, and high level of cyanide. And so, um, if you come to Confanoche or you have gone to any of these hospitals that are very close to Galamsey site, there's a high level of kidney diseases there. Um, high level of skin diseases, um, funny diseases such as cancer of the skin, and then um, the liver cancers. In fact, the brain, as we speak now, I, I sometimes uh, look at it and say that, look, come 
some few years to come, you will get people working and you feel that this is a human being working, but basically the brain is not working in terms of all manner of things that you are seeing. Because if you inhale mercury, which has been uh, uh, sent here, who are going to pollute the, the atmosphere, the air, and people are inhaling it, because there are so many means by which we can get ourselves I mean, intoxicated by some of these things. Either we inhale, we ingest, or we, we drink, or we whatever things, or we even swim in it, because sometimes some of these children, for something that is unknown to them, jump into some of these water bodies and start swimming. And these water bodies are all contaminated. I'm talking about the very ones that have been left by the galaxies or the mining um, workers. They don't cover them. People are being drowned in, the, in, these, um, in these open waters that have been collected in these pits. As, as, as young as two years, children are being drowned into it. And so you can imagine the sort of thing that we are looking at. No attempt is being made to even to cover them. So the problem is a little bit serious, and I believe that whoever is in, in power should do something about it. I'm not saying, I'm not, I mean, the one calling for total ban. I'm not interested in total ban, but what I'm interested in is the fact that, yes, there should be a stop somewhere, and this time we are not going to allow politicians to take to us as to what to do, but we should be involved in the decision as to who should do what at any given time, so that the politicians will not have a field day and feel that once you are voted into power, you will suddenly become the most wise person on earth, I mean, in Ghana or on earth. That is not the right thing to do. We should be able to, I mean, take our own destiny into our own hands. And Prof, a lot of people are with you on this point about taking our destiny into our own hands, not allowing politicians to uh, dictate to us, uh, especially when they are in power and think that they have all the wisdom uh, there is. I want us to watch a video because there's evidence here to support what our Professor Ose is telling us. Let me tell you that some of the content uh, are a bit sensitive. Viewer discretion is advised, but watch this. Preserved in formalin at the Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technology for observation. He or she is not your normal baby. Baby X is deformed. It has no genitals. It has six fingers and six toes and a malformed head. This baby was discovered by Professor Osei Sampini a pathologist, scientist, and a senior lecturer with the Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technology. The first case I've had was in the western of, which is Bibiani to be precise. The mother was sent to the labor ward. She couldn't make it, so she died. And you see, whilst the person dies, usually the doctors will not go ahead to do cesarean section. The baby and the mother are sent to the mob. And then another person comes in to remove the baby. This was after the autopsy to separate the baby from the mother who died before delivery. The baby or the fetus that was in the mother's womb was deformed. Deformed in the sense that the baby had multiple limbs, um, including, I'm talking about upper and lower limbs, uh, the eye was not well formed, fused together. Um, he had no sexes, that is, there was no identifiable sex. And generally, I mean, in medicine we call it dysmorphic, where you could not see anything that makes the baby, I mean, if he had been even born, would have lived comfortably in, in life. Professor Sampene traces the cause of the deformities to heavy concentrations of lead, mercury and cyanide found in the placenta. Well, mercury, cyanide, lead and arsenic, yes, in that, in that order. They were all there. They were all there. Of course, in some appreciable concentration that could be damaging to the, the normal function or the normal development of the DNA, the baby, and so on and so forth. What? Quite disturbing images you just saw there. Uh, but that baby you just saw uh, in the footage 
was discovered by Professor Ose, the man we're having a conversation with. And what he watched uh, were excerpts of a documentary done by Joy News on the impact of illegal mining on us. A prof is still on the line, uh, a video call with us. Prof, you discovered this baby. Just tell us a bit more about this and whether or not the death of the mother is also associated with uh, this information that you gave us in this documentary. Oh, yes, um, you see, if you had spoken with any doctor, especially our obstetrician, Ghani specialist, uh, especially the obstetrician, they would tell you that. Uh, for a mother to be able to deliver, the efforts are made by the baby and that of the mother. Of course, the mother takes the chunk of the efforts, but the babies also play an important role. And so for a baby to play and such an important role, um, the, I'm talking about the, the, I mean, continuous vaginal delivery, where the baby and the, the mother, the baby is delivered through the vagina. And so in that sense, there should be some synchronization. But if there is any deformity, which of course, especially the one that we saw, the deformity was very vast, which included the brain. In fact, all the organs that needed to would have helped the mother and the baby to have synchronization for a successful delivery was not there. And so this woman uh, will, will actually go into prolonged labor, and which of course we know that um, labor is something that takes a specific time to to actually to. Uh, uh, to come out. I mean, so when it delays, the child goes into what we call asphyxia, uh, which will lead to what we call a brain, brain death. And then the mother, after struggling to deliver the baby, will not come out, I mean, successfully, will also go into some form of uh, um, respiratory distress and dies, or cardiac, cardio respiratory distress and dies. So, in fact, this is only a tip of the, of the iceberg. I have so many of them. I have so many of them, uh, which, of course, um, um, I was not allowed to take the babies, actually. But those that I was allowed to carry the baby for further investigations, I was able to do that. But so, um, I'm, I'm, there, are, there are so many. It's just, it's just about a few, you see. And so sometimes I find it very sad when you are looking at uh, generational extinction like this, and people are sitting down there claiming that it gives money to people. People are being employed as a result of this illegal mining or small-scale mining. Arm robbers are also employing people. Can we encourage arm robbery? It's so sad that politicians sometimes behave the way they behave. Very, very sad. Very, very sad. Mm. Too many of them, you say, Prof, we'll come back to you, but let's come to our guest right here in studio. And you just mentioned BBNA because the baby we just saw in that footage, you said, uh, was from a mother who lived in BBNA. And we let, also... Let me, add, let me add this. I'm saying that I have so many, not only BBNA, I covered Western region, Western North, Central region, part of Central region, and then part of Eastern region. But of course, BBNA, as in Western region... Uh, I think Western North, rather, and then Western region proper from uh, not Takradi per se, but Wasel Proponel. Exactly. You see all these things there. So Mibiani was one of the places that uh, Asari don't call chance upon when we were having the discussion. There are many of them. Mm, there are many of them. And we'll get a response from the MPP representative who is in studio with us, uh, George Money, because he is actually from the Western North as well. He's representing his original secretary in the Western North for the NPP. But let me start with you, Mr. Abraham Maliba. I just, in my intro earlier, said that whilst majority of Ghanaians are calling for a ban on small-scale mining, you just heard the prop there. He's not totally enthused about a total ban, but a temporary one. We also have small scale miners saying that we are actually misshooting because we need to look at the illegal miners and not necessarily small scale miners. From where you sit, should we ban it or not? So good morning to your viewers. I tend to agree to what the prof said, including what the small scale miners are saying. Why am I saying this? Our concern is with illegal mining. That is what is devastating to us. That is what is causing the environmental degradation. 
those who are licensed to mine, including the big companies, are doing it under a certain regulation or regime. And so that is not our problem. Our problem is those who engage in illegal mining. And so the ban that people are calling for cannot necessarily extend to the small scale miners because they have invested in their work. And if you do that, it means that you are stopping them from having their livelihood because we have, there's no evidence to show that they are the ones who are degrading the environment. Having said that, is there a political will to, as well, stem the tide? The answer is no. You remember we had some of the party executives of the MPP say party here, Sika. You remember we had a situation where the MPP said that it lost parliamentary seats along that enclave, the mining enclaves. And for that matter, they are not going to deal with the matter this time round. Now, if you have such comments and you have such lack of political will coming from the government, then you can understand why we are where we are. You also have top party executives engage in mining illegally. Take a quantum mine. Owner is, uh, what's his name? Um, Wound to me. And so if you have such a situation, I'm even told from the Frimpon Boatin's uh, report that people close to the Flagstaff House or even working in the Flagstaff House are also engaging in it, the Frimpon Boatin um, uh, report. And you know that's a report the government has dismissed. But what hasn't the government dismissed? The, they are even dismissing the closure of our stadia, that, that CAF should come back and look at it again. It's asking CAF to look at the University of Ghana, one which was uh, recently launched. But they know that it's, it's, its capacity is 20,000, less than 20,000. And it cannot, it cannot uh, host international games. So who is there? Who is, who is at the sports ministry not knowing these things, these fundamental things? Mr. Mariba, I want, you, I want to put you on your word. You're saying that there's a lack of political will. Are you restricting it to this current government? I am talking about what is currently happening today. But if you're talking about political will, I, I guess you want to admit that there has not been any political party that has been willing that to That is what this. you do, and we cannot fight. Eh? That is what you do. And we cannot move forward. We are stagnant. No, but you... There's a government that has left office eight years ago. What business do you as a host have to be referring to that government eight years ago? I am not referring to government eight years ago. But what ago. are you saying? You're saying that I, ah. we are looking at this issue holistically. And you're limiting it to a particular administration. And because I'm saying that it has started from one point to the other. Because today... When this professor is talking, he's not talking about eight years ago. Today, when the small scale, uh, the, 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 the peasant farmers are complaining that mercury or whatever enters our food to eat, they are not talking about yesterday. We are talking about today. I think the point I want to make with this we are not making any point. Is you that <laughs> for, uh, for over the years, as a country, we have failed to deal with it collectively as individuals in our, in our respective homes or as political leaders. When you take this chair, you can talk that way. But here I am. I am saying that we have elected a government into place. The wrongs of yesteryear and the wrongs of today are to be corrected by that government. That's why we vote governments into office. If you don't know what governments are supposed to do, governments are supposed to deal with the welfare needs of the people. So when you come, and you promise the people heaven on earth, and you told the people you will develop this country in 18 years, uh, 18 months, and you have failed to do that. And I'm asking, I'm saying that you have failed. You say, oh, how about uh, Diabo de Azambuja's time? 
How about in Kroma's time? How are we moving forward with that kind of argument? So the next government will come and say that, oh, if I even do it this way, they will also refer to the uh, last government. Let's put a, a stop to that. Mr. Malba, I'll come back to you. As Why you come back to me? Let me finish my submission. <laughs> now, the point is this. If we have good practices where Galamse doesn't take place, can't we learn from that? I know in Dorma, the Dorma healing does not allow that. I am told that um, Agogo, I don't know, uh, that takes place there. How come that in some, and I'm aware that the Asante Hine also cracks the whip on his sub chiefs who engage in that? So, my question is how do we have these areas not engage in that activity whilst in some areas they are engaging it and destroying the environment? I believe that government can do something, can learn, can pick a leaf from the, the, the conduct of these leaders I've mentioned, the, the chiefs that I've mentioned. I have not seen the Nana Kufado reprimand any of his subordinates who have been found engaged in that. What he does is rather to clear the person, and that's, uh, 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 what's his name, uh, the, the, the Ashanti Rojami, uh, uh, I could tamize. So if you have a president who is so lukewarm towards what is happening to the people, you have these things. And I'm telling you, look, it says that in football we have a calf that, is, that has a responsibility to look at the internal affairs of member states. If we had a, a confederation of African lands, Huh? that can also look into our last matters here, they would have declared some of our areas of uh, Galamse as inhabitable, and by now, they would have recommended evacuation of people from those areas. Mr. Maliba, like I said, I'll come back to you. Let me come to you, George Money. Mr. Maliba, he's just sitting by you, and he's saying that... George, George Money. George Money, yes. <laughs> <laughs> George Money, yes. He's just saying that your government has failed. The MPP has failed at dealing with this matter. The reason we're here talking about whether or not there's a need to ban small-scale mining. Thank you very much. But before, before I tackle the Galamse issue, I think I would have to as somebody from the Western North region and as somebody who is a PC, when I say PC, it doesn't mean a parliamentary candidate, but in the Kukute it means a purchasing clerk. Mm -hmm. And also as somebody who farms, in, uh, who does cocoa production, I, I need to applaud the government and then the Ghana Cocoa Board for increasing the price of cocoa. As it stands now, Ghana's price is the highest within the sub-region. Ours uh, is about $3 per kilo. Well, I don't that think that, that is I'm accurate. Coming. No, I'm it's, that's it. I was at $3 per kilo. But Ivory Coast is so higher. And no, no, we no, no, haven't no, no, even seen true. the it's 2025 no, 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 uh, price. Uh, Ivory Coast announced that you can check from, from the Council okay, of Cocoa, so, but can we the stick of to, Cocoa and Kaffi. Can we stick to that? It's because 2. 4, if, if no, it's $2.48 per per metric but per, per you, kilo in Ivory Coast. If you want to go to the Cocoa Centre, you know there are a lot of issues there. No, I'm coming. I said per the price. I'm being specific. Right, and I have my fact. I'm telling you, I am a PC. I buy the cocoa myself. That's fantastic. As somebody who is in the industry, and I need to applaud the government for doing such, Excellent. A, such a thing. Excellent. And, and then it's very important because we are talking about Galamsee, where we are looking for an alternative livelihood for the people who are engaged in, in Galamsee. And we are also, it's also very important because when you look at where Galamsee is taking place, most of the lands has, uh, were, were previously used for cocoa cultivation. So if the prices of cocoa is high, then it means it can serve as a motivation for people not to be engaging in that. Me, but to Mr. Money, you know that's not, so very, very, that's, that's not accurate. That's not accurate because very accurate. we are it's struggling very, with our cocoa production because our lands very, have been taken over by that illegal miners. That is what miners. I'm saying. That is and what I'm saying. We have been that's, struggling. I just want us to stick to the topic. But yes, I, I just but, also want to bring the facts to you that we have been struggling with keeping cocoa in the country because people are smuggling out of the country. Course, and yesterday... Of, 
just a second. Mm -hmm. Yesterday, we spoke to a representative who said that they were looking for 65% to 70% increment. The government is only given 45%. We, that is not enough no, it's to never motivate true. any Th farmer. Those things are never true. We can go into the spot pricing and future, future markets. And, uh, we just don't look at prices at, at spot and say that is how cocoa should be sold. Perhaps we will, like we will have another conversation then, yes. on that. But and can then, you really stick I'm to this? I'm going to go to, into this, but mm -hmm. I'm saying that cocoa production... If you motivate a lot of people to produce cocoa, it's a way of uh, reducing galamsey. Now back to the topic of galamsey. I'm coming from a region where we have seven out of the nine regions engaged in uh, mining activities. I'm also coming from a district within that same region which has no mining activities ongoing, despite the fact that the geological survey report shows that we have a lot of gold on our land, yet there is no mining activity. That is Bia East and Bia West, no mining activities. I also have a background and land reclamation because I was a project manager for Ecosystems International from February 2017 to June 2017 and we were responsible for reclaiming lands in Achim Apapem, Achim Adadientem, Achim Ebokwa and even contributed to the Chibi Industrial Park. So I have a lot of insights there. Now to, the now, to fight Galamse, we need to adopt a very nationalistic approach. If we try to play partisan politics with it, we will, we will not achieve anything. Sorry, the sir. reason why no, I'm coming. The reason why we need to adopt a nationalistic approach is to ensure cohesion and also to ensure continuity. It is also to ensure that the people who would participate in the um, uh, in the in the fight will get to know that, despite the regime, the approach is the same. But if you go the line as what my brother Amaliba was suggesting, the line of politics, I can we we will we'll be pointing accusing fingers. Uh, towards each, each other, but I don't think that is what we have to do. And let nobody also deceive us that Galamse is only prevalent in the southern sector. You see, I have my friends, they did a research and it's published, published research. This was done in the Upper West region. And their conclusion was that if you go into any mining community, any mining community in the Upper West region, 69.3% of the local people are, are, are engaged in that, which means that to tackle the issue of mining or galamse, you need to adopt a very holistic approach. It is not about adopting any knee-jerk approach. Ghana, for the last two decades, have been experiencing uh, uh, this uh, degradation at an alarming rate. And then we have adopted several approaches to that. Uh, Prof. Mills tried solving it by launching the youth in, youth in mining scheme in Akwetia. It didn't work. John Dramani Mahama came with uh, uh, arresting and it never worked. His Excellency Nanado Danko Kufuadu came with uh, Galam Stop and then some operations. It achieved a minimal success. In fact, prior to the 2020 elections, there were some achievements until after the 2020 elections where Galam C during that election, electioneering period, was just used as a campaign tool by his major opponent. And as somebody who belongs to a political party who seeks to achieve two things, one to win an election and the second to develop the country, if the very vehicle in which you are going to use to achieve the first is being attacked, you would have to sit back and retreat. Now Galamse is on the rise. That's become a national camp. And I, I think that we have to deal with it from a national approach, as I've, I've told you. And then also, I also have to applaud the Minister of uh, Mines. I mean, the Minister of, the Minister of Lands and, and Energy, Honorable Bujinapo, when he met the regional ministers last three days. You see, I'm coming, I said I was, I'm coming from a region where we practice, a region where we have Galamse and a district without any mining. When you go to my district, not that there have not been any attempt to mine in the area. There have been several attempts. But when they come, we adopt a citizen approach. Mr. Mr. Mooney, let me just come in here. You're here doing praise and worship of the I'm government. I'm not doing any just praise and second. worship. Just a second. You're not. saying, and I also you, hear you say, just a second, You sir. are not listening to what I am saying. I am saying. listening exactly to uh -huh. what you're saying. And I what hear you it? say we need to. Yes. We need to. Yes. Meaning that these are steps we need to take. Yes. But the MPP has been in power for the past seven years. Mm -hmm. Just in December, you'll be eight years, meaning that you are almost eight years. The government, the president himself, put his presidency of on the line. Of course he did. A voice that we've been playing since this intensified fight. There was Operation Vanguard and a whole lot of other activities that came in to fight this. Wait. As we speak, I just mentioned that the Ghana Water Company is saying that it is unable to treat 50 
50% of our water. We've just had Professor there who is still on video call with us telling us the impact of illegal mining. We've seen the water bodies. We've seen how many people have died from it. People are even complaining about lack of prosecution. Yes, the other time at the bar conference, we heard the AG talking about 60 uh, or 70 plus cases which are being prosecuted yes. out of 100 and something with over 800 cases. Yes. But you seem to be in a different world because so, the reality so, is not what you're painting. So that is why I said you are not listening to me. I because am. if you were listening, I would have, you would have noticed that I'm saying that we, the approach, have to be a citizen-led approach. We always seem to blame the political head. But I, was, I just gave you a reference that when you go to any Galamse community, 69.3% of the populace there engage in such an activity. So if you want to tackle it, that is the angle that you should, you should go by. And I was about giving you an example in my district that there have been several attempts to mine. But because we do not want it, any time we see them, they will chase them away. It's just one that district out of how many? Two districts. Two districts. Out of there how is, many? There was, no, I'm, you see, when you want to solve a problem, we have something we call a case study. You can go there and look at the methodologies that we are using to stop Galamsey, and then you can apply it to the major po populace, and then it will work. How effective have those methodologies it's been, you talk it's about? It's been the... very effective in as much as, as of now, there have been no Galamsey in Eliochrome, Adabo Chrome, Debiso. There have been no Galamsey. It means it's, 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 it's So how it's come effective. we have a lot of our water bodies polluted? Not, how come... Not, that is what I'm coming, that if you allow, you see, for every Galamsey activity to go on, there are three things that must come into, into play. You need to have a very big businessman to find pre-finance. And then also you would have to have a very connected person, a very connected person who will pave way for the person to come. And then you must have somebody who is quite popular within the community, be it a chief, be it a religious leader or anybody, to pave the way for the person to come. When these three things come together and then they enter into the community that is where you have the things happen fantastic which you big understand? businessman have you prosecuted is it but the ag just told you that he has a lot of cases do you know all of them do we know the name who can you give us but the name you, aside when from aisha one no. at least he mentioned aisha of course of course because aisha one who is a foreigner an of whether being a foreigner or whether being a Ghanaian, he is a business person financing Galamsey activities. Do you think you're being fair to Ghanaians with these statistics you see, you're giving? When people you see, are giving us the real reality on the I ground, am also and telling we know you, it. I mm -hmm. am also, you see, you are not listening. You see, it, you are not listening. I am telling you that Galamsey is a national canker. You admit, I admit. We equally know that Galamsey has a devastating effect on the environment. And the professor have just told us that Galamsey is even affecting mortality and all that. We all accept but what is the approach to fight Galamse? Should we, should we be repeating the approaches that we've been implementing, those partisan politics approach, or we are to adopt a very nationalistic approach in dealing with this kind of... And that is why I asked you the question. Right? For almost and that eight is what years, you've been implementing a supposed we learn, we measure learn, that is supposed to deal with this. We learn through experiences. We learn through experiences. That is why when the minister was giving the order this time around for, for the military and then the police to patrol this mining site, he never said that they were going to bring a petrol team from Accra or anywhere, as previously is, but rather to use the DISEC, which means the District Security Committee there, and then the, the RISEC, the Regional Security Committee, to do that, because they live in the community, so they better know the people than anybody who come from anywhere. Mr. Money, that is why the approach has to be different. Mr. Moni, you're telling us on national television indirectly that you've been doing trial and error, because you're saying we're not from being, No, 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 don't twist my words. No, 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 don't twist my words. If everything has worked to perfection, perhaps we not be speaking. We will be here discussing Galam Say. That is why the approach has to be different. It doesn't mean we've been doing try and error. So you it don't think that your measures, like that. your measures have failed? You don't think it so? It worked. The measures worked to some point. I told you that prior to 2020, this was not a discussion. This Galam Say was 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 Galam Say became a very topical issue during the election when the NDC went from one pit to the other, telling people to vote against the NDC because we are prosecuting them. And, I, and then I'm here telling you that every political party exists to do two main things. One is to develop the country, and the second is to win elections. And if the very vehicle that you're going to use in achieving the first is being, is being rocked, what do you do? You, you, have to, you would have to re-strategize. You understand? You, 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 the NDC themselves, you see, that's why I said I wanted to adopt a very nationalistic approach, because the chiefs of Chufu Atimokwa in February had to organize a press conference against the NDC constituency chairman in the area. 
because they believe he has destroyed 50 hectares of their cocoa farm for illegal activities. But is that the way we have to go? That is not the way to go. That is why I am saying that we should adopt a very nationalistic approach. And one way of doing that is just by regularizing this, this, this industry. Because we keep saying that ban, ban, ban uh, mining. Ban, which mining are you going to ban? Because what I'm saying this stuff is illegal. To find how, do you to ban, how do you ban something which is already illegal? And it's taking you almost how eight do you years ban to try something? to regularize them. Pardon? It's taking you almost eight years. We did. You see, you've not to been. Find out again, how to regularize again them. you've not been. Listen, we tried. We, we instituted community mining. What was community, community mining supposed to do? We instituted community mining, of which is, it's ongoing. Yet we are having spillages. And we, we are saying that as far as these spillages are concerned, as far as these things are concerned, perhaps we would have to revise our note. Perhaps we would have to revise our note and adopt a different approach. I've, I just gave you in context what Prof. Mills tried to do to stop Galamse. What His Excellency John Dramani Mahamas tried to do to stop Galamse. What Nana Kufuado tried to do to stop Galamse. All have been going. It means that if you look through these approaches, we must learn as we live through. We can't say that we want to do things the same way. We will always be achieving the same results. So if the person have lived through all these things and is now proposing different approaches and different methodologies, even as far as the law enforcement is concerned, you say no, then it means he has been doing trial and error. That is not so. Okay. That is definitely not so. Uh, so we would, the minister just said the president have, have ordered that the DICEC and then the RISEC should take the fight. Since they live in those communities, they better know the people. And for, if you care to know, just yesterday, I think yesterday was 12th of September, the miners themselves uh, at, Sefi, uh, at uh, uh, Mankranso in the Asante region, the miners themselves went to some illegal people who were, they, they claim were on the river body and then uh, seize their equipment and then bend their equipment. The miners themselves. I'm going you understand? to. But when you adopt a citizen led approach, this is the kind of things you are going to see. And then the place, uh, our whole environment will be safeguarded. I'm going to uh, Mr. Uh, Andrew Apia Danko very shortly. But I just want to remind you that this dissect thing you talk about, months ago, we had the president mention that any district uh, DCE or MCE which allowed Galamse in his or her municipality will be dealt with. Sure. So this is a renewed call, you mean, because it's not necessarily new. Well, the, 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 that was for only the DCs. And then, as we all know, you but cannot... But that was also supposed to be district and community-led. District and community... But I said that this approach, the new one, the renewed effort, is quite different. And we must give the ministers uh, uh, the benefit of the doubt to work it out. Well, I'll come back to you. Uh, Andrew, Apia, Dankwa, you're a private legal practitioner, and I know you're also with the Movement for Change. Just tell us, really, uh, first, your comment on what the two gentlemen have said and whether or not, based on these arguments, plus what Prof said, there's a need to ban small-scale mining. Okay, so <clears throat> so, let, me, so let, me, let me take this opportunity to, uh, to wish your lovely viewers uh, a good morning and, and yourself a good, a good morning, first time meeting you. Uh, well, I've listened to what Prof said uh, and, 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 and what Prof <clears throat> simply saying that the repercussions of bad mining practices are so dire that whoever is put into power or who, whoever is granted or is given the privilege of regulating uh, mining has a huge burden on them and, 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 and it's a burden that that person must take really seriously. Now I think the framers of our constitution had that in mind and that's why they felt that uh, when it came to mining, when, when it came to how we utilized our natural resources, there's no better person uh, to lead uh, that, that, that charge than the president. And they felt that the best and safest framework to do same was for the president to do that as a trustee. Because when you are, you are a trustee, then the burden placed on you, both legally and morally, are meant to be so high. So Article 257 of our Constitution recognized that, um, that any natural resource in a, in a, on, 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 in the lands of Ghana belongs to the people of Ghana, and yet they are going to invest in the president, or they are going to invest those minerals in the president. As, so simply to put, to grant him legal title over those uh, 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 natural resources, and he's supposed to hold them in trust for and on behalf of the people of Ghana. The constitution didn't stop there. It then proceeded to create institutions that would better help the president to manage the trust 
that they placed in him. So they created the Minerals Commission, they created the Forestry Commission, they, uh, they, and, then, and then tax parliament or give parliament the power to create any institution whose focus is to aid the president in the discharge of this huge burden that has been placed on him. Now, what has happened over the years is that institutionally, and, and, and especially during the watch of Nanado, the, the institutions that have been created to regulate mining have not been strengthened, they've been weakened. And because of that, even though mining is supposed to be a highly regulated activity, the, 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 the regulator just don't have the logistics or the sheer numbers to, to, uh, to regu uh, 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 regulate. And it's a massive failure of the president. Uh, aside from the logistics you talk about, how do you mean by they have been weakened? Yeah, because, so you have uh, what's called a mining inspectorate body. They are supposed to have a mining. So is it, what reason can they give for not even knowing that people were mining outside, without licenses or outside the scope of their licenses? And you get a, 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 a picture. And then also, you have a situation where people are mining in forest reserves. People are mining on water bodies, which are supposed to be outlawed. If we had very strong mining, uh, what's called a mining regulatory regime, institutions, then why are they happening? Or if, the, if, if they are there and it's happening, then what's the president doing about it in terms of enforcement? We have the police, because mining, I'm saying, at the bottom line, is stealing. When somebody is engaging in, in, in Galamsey, they are stealing the property of the state. What's the police doing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's what I'm saying, that the, the problem is an institutional one, and it's a fundamental failure of government. I heard my brother saying that it should be a certain, certain led approach. But then that approach then puts into sharp context then the whole sense of governance, or of government. Because the reason why we decide to take government is to prevent anarchy. If the solution to our problems is by we the citizens taking the power or the laws into our own hands, then what we are going to create is anarchy. Yeah, 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 you understand. There is a reason why we give the president power. There is a reason. And he must not sleep. Clearly, he's, he's sleeping. As I've heard you tag, I've heard a call for as in demonstration. You see, we should be clear. The call should be for the head of the president. He's reneged on his duty as the president of Ghana. He's reneged on his duty as the trustee of the minerals of this country. And that should be the first call. He's here present the ministers. They've slept. They should be, they should burn down their heads in shame. You, you, you understand? The fact that we are here confused between the difference between small scale mining and Galamse is even a shame. I don't think Samuel Abujanapo may agree with you. He, he doesn't think that he doesn't have to on him to resign is needful. Uh, he doesn't. He, he, and, and you see, if he's patriotic himself, he will, he will, he will, he will if we're in a serious country, Abujanapo will resign. If we're in a serious country with all that is happening to our environment with the, the, the radical abuse of our ecosystem, with the extent to which our very existence has been put at peril because of what is happening. Abu Chapo sh should resign. And as I'm saying that, my brother here is talking about citizens. Yeah, you understand? Now the constitution says in Article 69 that one, where the president has breached the terms of the oath he took. <laughs> you, you, you understand? Where the president has breached the terms of the oath he took, then he must be impeached. And clearly, he's breached the terms of the oath he took. He, 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 I, 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 please, please, don't laugh. I don't like that. Oh, you can go. No, no, no. no, no. It's, it's, it's very, very disrespectful mm -hmm. yeah. to be oh. laughing when somebody's making a submission. You, you understand? I take serious exceptions yeah. to it. I've heard you. I, I won't laugh. Mm -hmm. I, 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 I didn't disagree with what you were saying, but I didn't laugh. Yeah, 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 you understand? You see, we must be serious because, you see, to, to, to solve these issues, I think a present has to be made. And I think because of the extent to which the president has slept on his job, to the detriment of the country, to the detriment of the safety of the country, to the detriment of our lives, our, our livelihoods, then he should be called to, or, or the call to be impeached for the president to be impeached should be heightened. Secondly, I understand there's a debate on whether or not uh, 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 mining, small scale mining, should be, should be, should be banned. Indeed, I was the, going to draw your yeah, attention yeah, 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 to it again. Understand. Now, Galamsey is already our lord. Galamsey is already our lord, so you can't ban an activity that, that is already our lot. So the challenge is, which I think you've answered partly. So, so, so I want to go to a second issue. Mm. Now, we, we are talking about, uh, what we are seeing here is an environmental impact of a fundamental failure to regulate mining. And I think that 
the mining act itself grants the minister where he's giving you a license to to mine to revoke that license where in a uh, uh, insurrection of a national security threat i think that and uh, 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 it is beyond contestation that where we are with 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 mining small scale mining any impact it's a national security issue <clears throat> and our environment needs to heal because of that i firmly believe that we need to ban small scale mining for a while maybe a year two years one to grant the environment itself the opportunity to heal two to then tackle look and tackle the issue of a fundamental inability or failure of the body stacks with regulating mining to be to be to be reconstituted or to be re-looked at because clearly there is an issue with the regulator from the president to the minister to the body stacks with the job of regulating mining as in you, he was talking about dissec because per our mining laws we in every district we have a, a body set up to more or less regulate not to, as in at the district level why is there no rep from the forestry commission in that committee because there's, uh, there's no rep from but you are talking about sustainable development here and sustainable development is simply utilizing our natural resources one for economic gain without impacting or minimizing the impact of such utilization on our environment you understand so for me i think the call to ban temporarily is, is not a permanent ban or oh, after even for the small scale mine they don't give them licenses more than five years they don't give them licenses more than five years but the our environment our soil is has been plagued in deep sickness and i think that we must give the environment the soil the river bodies an opportunity to heal itself and because of that i think we should put a temporary ban maybe one year two years three years and then also have a look at our mining regime and thirdly and from that's the most important thing that the call by organized labor the call by the rank and file of this country is to apportion and appropriate blame for this crime that has been done to our country crime yeah, okay. yeah, yeah crime of course and when we give power to somebody we give powers as high as executive authority we create in you a trust and in spite of the powers we've given you powers we gave you for you to use to advance our common agenda and you use those you sit down and you sleep because i know my my senior here mentioned a report you understand and the government or the president can can uh, disavow that report but the fact is we are all seeing the impact of those reports but that report made a claim that in 2018 we all had that claim that in 2018 the president gave clear instructions to his minister ban all mining activities in forest reserves in spite of that call we all know that people Ghanaians, have illegally entered into our forest reserves and are mining there what has the president done what has the president done and so for the long term a safety of this country a prison must be set and i'm saying that it's not enough for you tag and, and say that we are calling and we want a demonstration the, the demonstration to do what that call that demonstration is to call for the head of the president to ask that the president should be impeached because the simple tax we gave him he slept on it he slept on that tax to the detriment of every single Ghanaian. Why is it still there? What systems are we put are we putting in place to ensure that people we give our powers to? Because you made a great point. You made a great point because in tackling this issue, we need to also look at the past. People we give powers to, what did they do in the past? And how do we use our experiences and how those experiences are, are impacting us right now mm. to ensure that there is no repetition? Mm. You, you understand? And the best way of preventing this is to set a president. So there's a deterrence. So, so when, people, when, when we give our political powers to people with a clear tax, powers that they take oath to fulfill and they renege on those trusts, those obligations, then there must be consequences. And I think that we can start. I know the president has less than a uh, uh, hundred years to go, but we can start. Hundred days, you mean? Sorry, sorry, hundred, hundred, thanks, thanks, hundred days to go. But we can start. But sure, even, if, even, even if he has one day to go, that we call for his impeachment. So when people take this uh, political powers, they know that they are not taking those powers to pursue their personal agenda. They are not taking those powers to pursue their party agenda. But they are taking, we are giving them those powers for just one purpose, 
to pursue a Ghana agenda. And if you do not pursue the, that Ghana agenda with the powers we've given you, then you've lost every legitimacy to continue holding those powers. And that should be the first call. Uh, Mr. Piyadankwa, I'll come back to you and uh, Mr. Maliba. You want to make a point? The issue about uh, government officials neck deep in this matter and the reason for which they have not been able to fight this canker is growing more and more. A new company has been formed called Sam and Jan Company Limited. And you check the background of this company, it is somebody who is in government, who is actually controlling a municipality. Now you send such a person to go and fight Galamse, and he has applied to mine in a forest reserve. So when I say lack of political will, I wasn't playing politics, just to call a spade a spade. We have a report uh, from Paul Barton's report. Can we look into those cases and deal with them? Nobody will do it. So we are now faced with the canker head on. They say in uh, 2030 something we are going to import water. 2030. 2030 we are going to import water. Now, do you also know that it is against human rights for water, which is a source of drinking water for a community to be polluted? It amounts to international law, it amounts to genocide. In international law, when you pollute the source of drinking water, day in, day out, look at the color of our water. So how long should we wait when these things are staring in our faces? But for me, it is about those who are mandated to fight the canker are themselves neck deep. And that's why we can't fight it. Uh, so I'll come back to you on how long should we wait, Mr. Maliba, and also come back to you, Mr. Mone. But let's get uh, some word from Professor Ose, who is still on the line with us. Uh, Prof, you heard uh, there uh, Mr. Apia Dankwa telling us that there's a need to give our land some space to heal. He's talking about one year. He's talking about two years. Uh, from where you sit, how do you think we can reclaim our land? Well, thank you so much. Uh, but let me first uh, make uh, this point clear. Um, I'm not here to involve in any politics. I'm just here to state the facts as per my research work and so on and so forth. So basically, uh, I want to be out of the politics in it. But of course, somebody will say that everybody, everybody is a politician in one way or the other. But there are people who are actually actively participating in politics, so let it be so. But then, um, I have already said, and I keep saying that um, what is happening is, the research has been done, we have a lot of research findings all over, but then, beyond the research, what is it that we, are, we, we seek to achieve? First, we seek to draw the attention of the populace, especially those in power, those who seek to uh, enact laws for us, that this is what is happening. And if you are able to use those research data or research findings, we will be in a position to resolve so many problems. And so um, I will suggest that um, research, as far as I'm concerned, as far as researchers are concerned, I believe that the most government gives some fund for research to be conducted in various universities. Those research works are not supposed to be sitting on our shelves or in books where foreigners utilize our research work to the extent that they even invite some of our researchers to go and, and to their country and have some form of some collaborations with them. So research is very important that any government that wants to progress, that wants to achieve something should, I mean, actually look into research that most lecturers and most uh, scientists actually conduct. So. Even looking at um, the manifestos of both political parties, both NDC and MPP, I read through, especially when I wanted to have a look at what they have for Galamse, or they say, let's say, if illegal mining or uh, small scale mining. In fact, small scale mining, they be trying to actually make the two. But small scale miners are also deep, neck deep into this degradation of the environment. No, but no doubt about that. They are also into that because. What they do is that when they mine, they don't cover their pits. They don't replant. They don't do anything. 
they also use all manner of uh, means to extract their oil. So they are also contributing to the pollution of the air and so on and so forth. So they cannot exonerate themselves from whatever is happening here. That is that is a fact. So I believe that the government, in as much as is helping in research in the universities, this time, like I support the fact that uh, Mr. Pierre Danko, the legal, the private legal practitioner, what he said, yes, the land needs to be healed. And how does it heal? We need to go into research. There are so many means by which we can use to reclaim the land. I mean, clean the environment, clean the air and our water bodies. And that one, I didn't see any of the political, the two political, main political parties saying that when they come, um, in as much as we cannot ban the uh, mining perpetually, we would like to go into research into how best we can mine at the same time reclaiming the land and, I mean, purifying our water bodies and and then purifying the air. Nobody did anything like that. All I saw is that somebody was claiming that they will come and plant 300,000 bamboos. Bamboos are not plants that can reclaim any any polluted water. We cannot. We cannot reclaim any polluted air. We cannot reclaim any polluted land. So bamboo planting is, is one of the most useless things that can ever be used in, in, in telling us that uh, that is... Uh, the way they would use to establish or whatever they claim the land Prof, uh, is one. Mm, yeah. Prof, let me just get your final words in about uh, 40 seconds. And it yeah, just, yeah. yes, it we just should, has we to should do... also, yeah, let me finish. We should also try to strengthen the environmental mining laws. We should depoliticize the Galamsey crisis and we, there should be a call to action and we should empower traditional authorities to be able to do what they are mandated to do and also, we should involve the parliament and local government and security services in managing some of these things. But basically, the leaders or the, the two point political parties should set up a serious research team. Well, I, I believe that Ghana, we have Ghana uh, Academy of Academy of Arts Art and, and Sciences. Sciences. They are just sitting there. Um, nobody is actually looking into them, giving them funds to go into research. They should go into that and give them the needed support to be able to do research and come out with some of these findings that will probably help us to reclaim whatever has been destroyed. Because what is done, it will take years, years, tens of years, hundreds of years to get the whole land and the water bodies cleansed again. Thank you so much. Yes, yeah, so, uh, uh, Prof, what I was coming to you on, which I, I, I asked for about 40 seconds, was in the meantime, what we must do, because we know that uh, some food uh, sellers like Acheke are using alum to clear the water just so they can have good water to prepare their food. And I also suppose that the cyanide and all the all the chemicals could be seeping through our soil beyond the immediate areas of the mining uh, communities. How do we tackle this? Just That's about what I'm saying. seconds. Um, yes, it's not, a, it's not something that is going to come easy. Because we are looking at Tebiti, or uh, the, the Tebiti of the water bodies being destroyed by, by sedimentation from soil and so on and so forth. The metals, when they get there, they get suspended in these water bodies. So basically, if you hear parliamentarians saying that, oh, the, the, this party came in and the turbidity was this and we have come, it has increased or it has decreased to that, they are all not the fact. In fact, you are right. Acheke, I believe he's done, uh, prepared by uh, cassava, isn't it? Yes. And cassava itself is, uh, is, a, is a plant that actually absorbs a lot of this cyanide. So you can you can imagine the sort of problem that we are going through. I'm not scaring anybody though, but that is a fact. That is a fact. So if the water bodies are already having a lot of these metals, especially mercury, and these mercury are easily absorbed in the intestines and they can cause all manner of problems. I'm not saying that you shouldn't eat your acheke. Go ahead and eat your acheke. But the people who are who are using the waters to make, prepare their checkers should be also mindful of the fact that. There's, there are a lot of suspended heavy metals in those water bodies, and so that is where the problem is placed. I'm not destroying anybody or trying to spoil anybody's business, but that is a fact. But the alum, does it even work? The alum will only settle the, 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 the clay and then the soil in the water, but the mercury and all those things cannot settle it. So the water that we are drinking in Ghana that we claim to be pure water, how pure is the water? When we have even the rubbers that we we use to sell the, I mean, we used to sell the water in are all something that sometimes can also be contaminated and have problems for us. So that's the problem, please.
quite it's serious. A problem. So I believe that the politicians should, should actually depoliticize the Galamsey crisis, and then we all fight it headlong. And no, nobody should think that um, if, if we stop Galamsey, the whole Ghana will collapse. No, Ghana will not collapse. Ghana will continue to thrive, and Ghana will continue to succeed. So the very few, in fact, statistics show that only about 3 million people are involved in this Galamsey, including those that they claim to have employed. So they are not more than the 33 million Ghanaian population that are not doing it. You understand? So basically, we should be very careful about it and that we shouldn't play politics with it, that they are employing people, they are this and that. Galamse, like I said, Galamse, sorry, the armed robbers are also employing. They also employ young, young boys and, and girls in the activity. Can we, can we condone that? No. Well, we'll have to end it here. Thank you so much. Professor Thank Paul so. uh, Sampene Ose is a pathologist, scientist, senior lecturer at the KNUSC, giving us a graphic representation, really, of what's happening on, our, on the ground as regards illegal mining. Let me just get the final thought on this, and then we'll move on to the next conversation. And I'm coming to you, Ms. Abraham and Maliba. You asked the question before I went to Prof, and I pray that we'll be able to do this in one minute each. You said, how long should we wait? Yes, and, and, that, and that question goes to the managers of this country. But I think that immediately, immediately, let's declare water bodies as security zones. Because when you are entering Burma camp, you see how <laughs> you are <laughs> stopped and then the man is in that uh, uniform and checking your car. We have gotten to a point that that is how we do it. That water bodies should be declared as security zones. Two, let the president call all his people who are engaged in it. And there are examples to show. It is not like there's no evidence. If he doesn't know them, he should go to the Frimplum Boatins report. He will see them. Let them stay away immediately. Immediately. Let them stay away. They have, they have amassed enough. What if they don't continue for the next 80, 80, 85 days? Yeah, they will not go hungry. Mr. Mariba, I want to move to the... To no, the no, what, what, what is that? What is that? You are just stopping me in mid-air. I am saying that... Okay, talk, go, go to them. No, go ahead. Ah. When I'm talking about the president, you are feeling uncomfortable. So, no, it's not about so that. So the president should call that. his people to order. They, he knows them. Let him, let him do like that Santini has been doing. Call them to order and let them know that as for the president resigning, it's a tall order. He, he won't. In some countries, he himself will resign. Abu Jinnapo uh, resigning, senior. it's a all, tall senior. order. He will do it. So impeachment, they have to tell themselves that the people will support him. So it is for me now, for President Akufado to say that I am now going to leave office. I'm getting old now. Let me live with a good name. And so let him do things that will ensure that our water bodies come back to life. And these are the examples he can do. Use this military, declare them as military zones, and then tell his people to vacate the places. Let me ask you one question, and please, I'll be happy if you can answer it very briefly for mm. me. Is the former president still going to go through with his promise ahead of the 2020 general election that he will release all galamseyers who have been imprisoned by the president? He would release those who are... The, the the small small uh, 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 pick fishes he will go for and your, your man made a point that there are kingpins they have been left so he will go after those ones and i think because if you go after those ones the kingpins the small the fishes will not do anything let me come to you uh, mr uh uh apia dankwa uh, your final thought on this, and then briefly, hopefully in a minute, we can look at the Electoral Commission and robust, robust uh, 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 voters uh, register. Well, I think the issues for me are straightforward. One, let's apportion blame and call for accountability in the evil that has been done to this country. And contrary to what my, my brother here is saying, I think we, I'm calling that we should Make, take steps to impeach the president. You see, when you feel it is on record that Nanado was impeached, the impeachment process just didn't. Well, Donald Trump on his record, he, he was impeached. Uh, Andrew, and, Andrew Johnson saying, uh, you understand, uh, Bill Clinton. And two, <clears throat> let's cause a ban 
on small scale mining you understand maybe two years three years like i'm saying allow the the system itself to 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 heal and then let us then look into a regulatory regime yeah you understand look look at it and then and, and, and enhance the institutions so that they can uh, better regulate uh, mining because we all agree mining has the potential of transforming this country but that potential will be lost if it's not regulated if mining is done in such a way that our environment itself is impacted and finally uh, to, uh, to say what Alan Chamanzen himself would do he's like when he comes you eliminate Galamsey straight up and two you look at the regime I'm talking about you see one of the reasons why we are struggling is because we've re we've relegated the chieftaincy the chiefs and, and they own largely the lands we have to find a way of also creating in them together with the president as trustees and that one you have both the uh, 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 government itself and our local authorities joining forces in regulating uh, 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 um, and mining and finally government needs to support the Ghanaians are people who are involved in small scale mining. As in, when we when we re uh, start the mine af after the ban, government needs to find a way of supporting them, not just in terms of money, but also training them and making them able to mine in a sustainable manner. Mr. George Money, are you going to tell uh, the government, perhaps the president, that? The panel here and perhaps other Ghanaians are calling for the big fishes, the whales <laughs> and the dolphins, to be arrested and leave the small ones alone. I, I think that uh, the president uh, is showing leadership in this. The minister is showing leadership in this fight. And then also to end on what the professor said, uh, he says that UTAC must make use of the research allowance, which was cancelled by the NDC, but have been brought back by the NPP. They should make use of that and conduct researches into some of these things so they can provide good solutions. Also, uh, I wonder why people are calling for the head of the president when the LI 2462 was passed by parliament, which allows uh, forest reserves to, to be mined. Perhaps the, the anger should be directed to, to, the, to the doorsteps of the parliamentarians as to why they passed that. And then also to say that whenever something or whenever a policy or anything is it's implemented, we set out the clear objectives, and then also we set out uh, evaluation criteria, to, and then also have our monitoring framework so we can monitor. In the course of monitoring, in the course of evaluating, if you see that the actions are not going on well, you adopt a, di a different strategy. As we all know, GALAMC affects both the inhabitants as well as it affects the leaders, which means that uh, a holistic approach needs to be adopted. I always say sovereignty relies in the people. So when the people say that they are never going to allow Galamse to happen, it will never happen. And then also, also I always say that if you go to the mining areas, you will realize that we, uh, the professor was talking about pit. They are talking about pit because they do not have access to proven data. What they do is try and error. I don't know whether you've been there. When they go and they dig the encomena, they can do about three, four, five encomena before they can get the gold. And then the person will never come back to, to reclaim the, the holes he's dug. Right. So in the NPP manifesto, what Dr. Mamou Belmia is promising is that we need to give access and proven data to these small scale mines. And the second one is that we also have to simplify the licensing regime and give more power to the chiefs because chiefs, uh, per the Ghanaian law, the chiefs control about 78 percent of the land. It resides in them. So when you empower them and when you change the licensing regime for them to play a role I we think that is going to help. Chiefs and then also and then so also they're... and then also that is your mind hitting. It resides in your mind and not the small small chiefs. And then also we are saying that the methodology would have to change. The use of mercury, cyanide and all lead and those things would have to change, which means that we need to empower these small scale mine, miners to, to do so. There is one thing that the NPP manifesto done that when you look through all the research which have been conducted and then also some writings of Professor Famille as well as his work. I was so happy when I saw it, was to construct resettlement dams. Professor Familia, God bless his soul, was able to do small-scale mining where he dug his own water and then had his own dam, which had no effect on the environment in our way. People paid money just to go and see how he and his partners were doing that. The MPP manifesto captures that. And then also the MPP is saying that we will have to reclaim 
you know, reclamation is the best way to go. I have experience in that because I quite remember in 2017. We'll be glad if you could what, wrap up in 30 Yes, seconds. I'm wrapping up. What we wrote to the Ghana Cocoa Board is that immediately Galamse, is, 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 they finish the, the, the land. The land is just left there. It doesn't belong to the chief. It doesn't belong to anybody. So you're talking about so, now and he's talking about future. So, so what we had to do or what we ought to do is to reclaim this land, plant root plants, uh, like tuba, tuba plants, which can absorb this lead. You plant them, you destroy it. And for, for some period of time, the land becomes very suitable. You can plant your cocoa and then the cocoa cultivation grows up. That was the, our proposal to, to Ghana Cocoa Board, of which they accepted. And then when you come to Western North now, they are implementing it. So when you go to BBN, you see a lot of but reclamation. But what you're saying, in the past seven years, it wasn't implemented. I will, I'm telling you that when you go to BBN, you will see it happening. It doesn't mean for the past seven years has not been happening. You see, we should stick to facts and then we should stick to contest in which the person is Thank you. And Thank not to allude to anything. Thank you very much, George Money. He Thank is you. Assistant Regional Secretary, Western North of the Governing New Patriotic Party. You heard him there uh, defending uh, the records or the work of the... Uh, current government. We've also had with us Ibrahim Amaliba, NDC Director of Conflict and Resolution, also uh, telling us really what we need to do and what must be done to deal with this kanka on our necks. Andrew Apia Dankwa, private legal practitioner with Movements for Change. Uh, unfortunately, we are unable to talk about the Electoral Commission uh, uh, matter, but also we had Professor Paul Sampene Ose, patholo uh, pathologist, scientist senior lecturer KNUST giving us a graphical representation of the impact of illegal mining on our water bodies on our lives and in our communities and uh, that will be the end of big issues here on new day coming up next is sport and of course the program continues don't go away